Your two wonderful hosts of Locked On Coyotes are morons. More after this. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Matthew Jacobson. On today's episode of Locked on Coyotes, we want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube and the Sirius XM radio app. Just search up Locked on Coyotes. we got a great show for you on today's episode. We're going to uh, take a little bit deeper dive, you know, and talk, talk about some some uh, some good, some drawbacks of the Fiesta Mall Mesa site. And a little bit later, we're going to get to some, to some of your mailbag questions that we got earlier this week. But let's get things started, Matt. Yeah, and uh, I do want to address a, a comment, a concern that was brought up, saying that Mesa isn't centralized. And I, I think maybe we didn't explain it properly, what our mindset was behind that. All Everyone knows the Coyotes fans are in the East Valley. Chandler, Mesa... Uh, Scottsdale and, and Scottsdale really would have been the perfect location for an arena years ago, but they decided to go west. <clears throat> but that is where the main fan base is. Phoenix is literally the centralized location, it connects the east and west valleys. But our mindset behind calling this location centralized, I feel like we did, but just in case we didn't, we should have said more centralized, especially to the fan base, because. It's a little further east than Tempe, obviously. It's like 15 minutes away from Mullet Arena. So depending on traffic, let's say anywhere between 15 and 25 minutes, Mullet Arena is usually around 20 minutes away from where most people that have the money to go to Coyotes games are. So maybe it extends that trip to about 30 minutes. Maybe it's about the same 20 minutes, depending on which direction you're going and, and splitting off on the freeway. Instead of going west, you'd be going further east or a little bit further uh, south. Yeah, absolutely, and, and and a couple other things too um, that I I was looking at is yeah, cool. You're more centralized in regards to all the fan bases. Yes. Um, another thing I looked at is taking a look at how far away each uh, the you know the Fiesta Mall is location would be to all of the uh, community ice rinks, and it's within very close. Like I think. The the uh, obviously Peoria would be the furthest furthest because that's the only one that's on the on the West Valley, mm-hmm. but Scottsdale would be the furthest and it's not even that far. It'd be like a it would it would have been like a fifteen minute drive, twenty minute drive. Um, so like it's not, you know, all pretty close, you know, because all like and all of the ice community ice rinks are on this side. Um, all the fans are on this side of the valley. If you can have a and or an arena there, I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty central to me, so I will go to a lot more of these games. I've had we've had fans say, hey, like I am a season ticket, like I like I well, I'm you know, like I thought about being a season ticket holder many years ago, but they were in Glendale. It's way too far. If they're in Mesa, I live in Queen Creek or I live in Santan Valley. I can easily become a season ticket holder at this game. Yeah, and it also goes back to. Uh, to just touch on, like we, we touched on it before, Javier Gutierrez calling a lot of the fans in waiting out there, especially in the East Valley. <clears throat> that location helps. And like I said, Tempe would have been the better location. And I'm still fully on the Ishbia train, but we are here to talk about the Mesa because the Mesa mayor wants this to happen. And that's all. You already got a little bit of political support is good. I've already seen of the comments that I've seen. So there's an asterisk. It's a small sample size. One small business that you know was, was supporting it because obviously more people in the area help stimulate more business. I've already seen at least five or so residents just responding to comments that are like, "Oh, it'll be closer to me," or "Oh, it's right in our neighborhood. I'm down with it." I've seen like three or so that were like, "Oh, I'm not down with it." So again, terribly small sample size. You can't look deep into that, but we are already seeing some early positivity. But we're also seeing we're, we're seeing some negativity. We're seeing some criticism of the location. And the main one, especially 
from one of the residents that said they wouldn't support it. Uh, thankfully, it wouldn't be going to a public vote, or at least if they're smart, it wouldn't be going to a public vote. But also, from Craig, from Craig and the guys over there talking about the traffic, and even though it's it's, it's accessible, it has a similar problem to the 202 when you're going to the uh, the, the 10 where it just gets backed up for seemingly no reason. And it's because there's merges and whatnot and, and people trying to go to and from, but apparently that is one of the bigger issues. And Robin, you live over there. You want to give this West Valley kid a little more context because I work at Glendale arena. Now it's a 15 minute drive. It's perfectly convenient for me. Uh, what, what can the West or the East Valley uh, people look forward to with Fiesta mall? I mean, it's, in, in, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, like, I think one of the cool things about it is, you know, the district that's in the Fiesta district, it's right now it's kind of dead. But um, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there. I think so many people love to pass by. I pass by it every day almost. Um, and it's, look, look, look at it this way. It is right off the 60 freeway, um, like 60. And I, and I think what, maybe a block east of the 101 um so like yeah sure people are gonna get there you're gonna like traffic yeah you know i've dealt with traffic on that side so i to, to me it doesn't bother me um but west mesa has i think the most opportunity to grow and the coolest thing is yeah yeah you got the fiesta district right there you got the asian district um just north of that if people like to you know indulge in some you know a cultural food you got riverview just north of that it's west mesa right now i think has got a lot of opportunity and i think fiesta mall if they were if you got something there i think it really presents in a, a massive development opportunity for the rest of the, the rest of the side of the city yeah trying to stimulate some economic growth because like you mentioned i've heard the exact same thing it's kind of dead i know a lot of malls unfortunately are dead i really liked paradise valley mall i think that closed down a couple of years ago uh we're literally just about to lose the mall where bill and ted was filmed over at metro center which really isn't that bad like the area is a little rough but like i lived over there it, it really isn't that bad it's just lower income um so like i feel like the whole mall thing is is dying in in this country but to take its place because it's set on a nice big piece of land you could fit an arena, probably the practice facility. I one concern that was brought up by by Craig was he does not think that that area can support high end shopping. And from everything I know about the area, probably not. No. Um, and and the retail might be a bit of an issue. Now that that's just because of of the land and like I think it would have to be rezoned. I, I don't know because I know it's at least zoned for commercial. I don't know about the details when it comes to like mixed use to have residential on there. So that could be a snag. I know that was mentioned multiple times that that is one of the biggest aspects to uh, to Morello's business model. But I do think, especially because you're only a couple miles away from the the Mesa Ice Den, uh, I, I do think that if you if you do market research and get the right shops there you're not going to get the high-end shopping you're not going to get the kind of shopping you'd get in, in chandler or in uh, scottsdale but you can get some decent retail there and help stimulate the economy and also uh, get some more jobs over there and you can also sell the people over there on we have better paying jobs we can bring here yeah and i'll give you an idea you know there's a lot of you know right now like just kind of like sprinkled in that area like restaurants and bars and whatever or fast food places mm -hmm. i was just at the uh chipotle right across the street the other day there's an in and out there there's a dutch bros and a and a raising canes and people just literally uh drive into like the uh the fiesta mall like entrance way and just go to the one of those uh goes one go, go to one of those like fast food places and then dip um so Every, a lot of things happen there. It's 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 pretty funny to see um, that literally just people just kind of like skirt skirt around the outside of it. No one goes inside, of course, because no one it's re it's ready to be demolished. I think it's in the process of being demolished already. Yeah. So having the coyotes there, having the arena, having the right shopping, it would have they would have to rethink it. 
I, I, I would assume the the current I this was asked to me just I want to address it real quick. I'm assuming the current arena blueprint and plans could probably just be reused. Uh but anything else with the district would have to be rethought. And it, it has the danger of potentially being a little too close to Westgate, but Westgate does generate some money, so I don't know. But we're gonna continue this conversation after an ad break, because we got to pay the bills. I need to get my 30 bucks a month. Let's do this. Absolutely. Well, everyone, today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Are you tired of sacrificing your style when it comes to your active wear? Introducing Bird Dogs, the game changer in athletic shorts. Picture this a premium shorts designed for maximum performance combined with unparalleled comfort. Bird Dogs are here to revolutionize your workout routine with the uniquely built in liner. They offer the ultimate support and flexibility, ensuring you stay comfortable even during the most intense workouts. And here's the best part. Bird Dogs are more than just workout gear. They're versatile enough to take you from the gym to the street without skipping a beat. Design a pocket that actually works. Bird Dogs give you ample space to store your essentials while you're on the move. They're made of premium, breathable fabric that helps you keep you cool and dry throughout your activities. And Lord knows that's important for right here in Arizona. Perfect for the trails, the gym, and simply landing around. Bird Dogs are just the shorts you've been looking for. So order your pair. A bird dogs today. Join the thousands of satisfied customers who have made this switch. Visit bird visit birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter the promo code locked on NHL. Get a free custom Yeti. Bird Dogs, Yeti style tumbler with every order. Bird Dogs. Where style meets comfort, performance meets perfection. Get yours on now and unleash your true potential. So Matt, here's a here's a couple things that I that yeah, I'm I'm really hopeful for you know the opportunity for Mesa site, more specifically the Fiesta Mall, mm -hmm. um, and it could be really any site in Mesa. Um, and you kind of mentioned it. it does already kind of have the support of Mesa Mayor John Giles. He's looked at. It, he's like, yeah, you know, like if I think the right deal is here, we absolutely welcome the Theos and the Coyotes to come here. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of private land that they can develop on, which is the most important. Mm -hmm. That was the key word right there, private land. That most of the, for the, for the most part, all you need to do is a private land sales. So you don't have to worry about too much. You also the only other kind of things that would really require city need were maybe a little bit of rezoning. Like I said, if Morella really does want to get some housing in there, if 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 at all possible, um, or any other kind of op, any, any other kind of like other space, it there's. Um, plus there will be less need for as many tax breaks. Obviously Morello probably will still want some tax breaks. He's built, he's, you know, he's developing right there. Um, but there needs to be some kind of concessions that Morello needs to make if they want to avoid a public vote. But I mean, John Giles has already said he doesn't foresee a deal being made, um, that will require a public vote. He says, yeah, I don't think we, I think we can make it work to not need one. <clears throat> yeah. And, and reading that snippet from the public charter is as long as there's no public money or, or tax incentives, I think it's above 1.5 million, which is nothing uh, in the grand scheme of these big, like $2.1 billion projects. Uh, they can, there's no vote needed. And my thing is I, I've seen a lot of people go a little pro billionaire uh, on this one where it's like, Oh, he's, he's good and need the tax breaks. And I, I'm not talking about Craig. Craig has said that obviously tax breaks are, go are going to be a big part of it. Cause that's how it was structured in 10 B. I'm talking about like the average everyday person. I was like, it would be stupid for him to, to not I'm like, look, he, he, if he wants this team to stay here, he wants that building. He wants that control. And he does not want another public vote. Suck it up. You already, your, your option a already involved the tax breaks. They already involved a really good deal on both sides. And you blew it. That is on you. You did not run a, a, the proper campaign. You did not put the proper money and funding behind it. The fact that labor unions helped the no campaign spend literally more than double what you spent. I'm still, a, a, I'm, I'm still a little perturbed about that. I, I'm still just because we should be talking about when we're breaking ground right now. We should, because that was a, a, an amazing deal. And the citizens of Tempe are going to be really mad when their taxes go up in a couple of years. And it's like, well, we could have had the coyotes here. So it's like, it, it, it's a situation that, that just angers me as, as a whole. But you already explored that. You tried that. You ruined your opportunity there. Literally, you need to do this 100% private. Now, 
those costs will go down because it's not going to be the exact same kind of development. If they don't do the residential, which I know they do want that, but let's say they decide to go with some some you know media men shopping and, and some office space because you can still make some money off office space and, and being a landlord there, uh, your costs are going to go down significantly because it costs quite a bit of money to put that that proper soundproofed residential there, you know, on, on the TED site. So a lot of costs will come down. Now, what does it look like? It it could be now. This no, there, I have no source. No one's in my ear saying this. I'm just trying to make a logical guess because. The, the footprint looks a little small, even though apparently it's almost double the size of the TED, but also it's a different use you'd have to make. I'm going to say it could it could go for as low as a billion to like 1.5 because you're going to you're going to be thinking, cutting a lot of edges off. There's a lot of things that will be cut from the TED plans. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will say that. I will say like, yeah, um, what it was like TED was 50 acres, I believe. Uh, Fiesta Mall is 80. Um, so yeah, it is bigger. Um, so it, there's more space, but that just gives, means you can do more space for parking or whatever else you need. Um, and I'm and I'm with you. I think I I'm I'm of the belief it would maybe like about 1.3 to 1.5. I think realistically is um, what I'm thinking for um, for the cost of everything. Which you know because it is. In West Mesa, I think you know a lot of thing. You know a lot of development in there is cheaper. Yes, it is the Fiesta Mall is like a prime thing. I think a lot of people, a lot of people have wanted to, to develop the Fiesta Mall. Um, I think it's been it's people have been wanting to develop it for what the last six seven years. No one has been able to have the right deal, the right money, the right need, the right things to do it. Um, Morello has the money. I mean, the owner that the the private owner that currently owns the land that wants to develop it also has the money. It's uh, for those that no, don't know. It's just, I think it's a com- it's a group called Verde Investment Groups, who is owned by Carvana. Oh, I I, I love talking about Carvana. <laughs> um, so imagine this. Then you have, uh, like imagine Morello buys the land from from Verde. And one of the contingencies on purchasing the purchasing the land and you know being able to develop there is you name the arena Carvana Arena. God, I would hate that. I used to work for Carvana, <laughs> and like I couldn't handle the, the the heat, so I'm like, hey, like you know, essentially, can I come back like when it's not this overwhelmingly hot? And then they they're like, yeah, you can. And then like close the door. So like. Uh, I don't like Carvana, but I also don't know if, if Lockdown's ever going to have a, a deal with them. So I was going to say, I don't personally like him and leave it at that. But wasn't the original plan to have office space there anyway from Verde Group? So theoretically, you also could reach an agreement. You could, the Coyotes could, of the 80 acres, they could buy 50 of it. And the other 30 could be still owned by Verde and, and put their office space or whatever they wanted to do. Or they could just sell off and say whatever. And the Coyotes could probably appropriate some of those plans, like, you still have options. It's going to be different, though. And with it being different, you're also, again, going to have some lower costs. You're going to have like, – it's not going to be that crown jewel that we wanted. But it might really no. help Mesa because if the mayor is this interested, we're already seeing some minor interest from the citizens where it's like, yeah, we'd like this area to be redeveloped, to be stimulated so, you know, the economy works a little better. You also, like – Local businesses, more people are going to be kind of wandering in the area. Like, there, there's a tire place on Glendale. Uh, it's a little further east of, of Westgate, and it, it I always used to buy, like, used tires there because I had one car where the wheels sat like this, and it literally ate away at the tire, and it, it, what, it wasn't worth it to buy new tires. So I just bought used tires. And uh, you can't tell me, like, people that are driving up Glendale to go to the arena didn't stumble across that business once or twice. You can't tell me on the outskirts over here or there. There's a business that wouldn't have got that wouldn't have got that business otherwise if there wasn't an event or something. So it's like they they understand the long term implications of having a development like this. Um, I am a little concerned with the the Dutch Bros and whatnot on the outskirts. Not because like I, I think it's gonna take away from the Coyotes profits, but it's like traffic for like Dutch Bros creates bad traffic themselves. I know they've done a it's better Dutch job. Bros and In and Out. I know they've done a better job 
building on a little more land and, and a little bigger parking lot. Uh, but another great point right there. Also, In and Out. I don't know why everyone loves In and Out so much, but those lines are constant. <laughs> Especially at lunch and I mean, dinner. You're talking to constant. a California kid at heart, so In and Out, In, in, in and Out is like <laughs> in my blood. But, but, um, but yeah, you know, Fiesta Mall. I think it's got a lot of it's, it's got a lot of you know opportunity. It's got a lot of pluses. It does have those drawbacks. You know, things that could potentially happen. Yeah, it's, yeah. You're not going to get the crown jewel. You're not going to get that. Um, but I'm also of the belief. And I'll mention this briefly because it's just like maybe something that I can talk for a di- for a different show. Um, that that can't be done. You know, there is a there is a privately owned county island just a few blocks north of Fiesta Mall, right off the bank of the Salt River. So and also I'll just leave it at that. The ocean side is on a county island. <laughs> that too. <laughs> that would be yes. hilarious. But they, 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 that'd be really complicated. You got to buy other people's land. Whatever. Anyway, the Coyotes might not get the crown jewel, but you just might with the second sponsor of this episode. I am working on those transitions. So, eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part <clears throat> every part needs to fit just right. So next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look at the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, the right place with ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available for U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply, yada, yada. eBay Motors, go check out some parts. So let's go ahead and close things off, Matthew, by uh, just taking a look at some uh, some questions that we have received through the Locked On Coyotes podcast. We're doing a little bit of a mailbag session right here, right now. You got, right? you, got, you, got our, you got our graphic. You got, you got the fun graphic, so we can we can make sure everyone knows what to look for on Twitter and ask us some good questions. I don't have it up <laughs> on me right now, but if you follow Locked On Coyotes at lo underscore Coyotes, you'll see it. There you go. So let's go ahead and get to, um, I guess this first one is a really good one. What do you believe is the drop dead date for a new arena deal to be solidified before Walsh and, and or the NHL Board of Governors publicly demand the Coyotes be sold or relocated? Walsh, six months ago, uh, the Board of Governors, I would assume the hard date has to be October 1st. I, I mean that in the context of that has to be the latest possible date, um, but it, it could be as early as the start of training camp. It could be as early as the, the first preseason game, uh, but it, it's definitely going to be before the Coyotes play their first game, and it, it's not going to be public. Walsh might because that I, I feel like that's what the NHLPA would do, um, but the border, and that's that's not meant to be a negative. It's just meant to be like they're, they're a union. It makes sense. Like you'd want to advocate publicly. Uh, but when it comes to the board of governors, they work very much behind the scenes. And everyone, it's evidence people hate Gary Bettman when 99% of his decisions are literally just what the owners want or what the owners tell him to do. So like they, he already has everyone tricked. So like, I, I guarantee you would be like buy whatever the hard date is. Even if it's internal and they just won't share it with any of the reporters, so it, we don't know. Whatever the hard date is, going to be like, all right, uh, he doesn't have a good enough plan or he doesn't have a plan in place, uh, call Ishbia or whatever the other alternatives are. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think around there, around training camp is probably the best the best bet for me, and I'm thinking about that one as well. Um, but you pretty much explained it perfectly. Don't really need to go too much into that one. Um we all this one we kind of already answered earlier this week, but what are your thoughts about Logan Cooley going back to college? You have any concerns long term that he may try to force his way out? No, it, it look, I, I, I was on record as saying what I think it was he was on the fence, and that was the deciding factor. Like, that was the last thing I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go back because he was leaning going pro, and that was widely reported. And also, we, we all kind of knew he wanted to go pro, he only wanted to do the one year of college, but with this hanging over. I don't want his development stunted. I don't like 
like I, I I touched on it before. Like someone was like, "Oh, he screwed over the Coyotes." It didn't. Like all it is is this kid. He's gonna go pro eventually, but he doesn't want to go into the situation where you have that much over his head. He's not gonna play. Likely not going to play his best hockey if he's in that situation. Because I, I think I also mentioned it on the show before. The 2009-10 roster was very much veteran heavy. This is a much younger roster. I I, I think. I, not that like they couldn't mentally handle it, but they're not built to do so. So I would rather the kids just get to play hockey than have this hanging over our head. So I, I, I'm not concerned at all. I will become concerned if he doesn't sign by the end of this season. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it's it's not uncommon. I think college players are doing this all the time and it really helps them going an extra year. Um, so uh, yet I don't think it's much of an issue. And you're right. If he does stay out an extra another year after that, might be start like I wouldn't say sound the alarm quite yet, but raise a flag. Definitely put him on the trading block and see what the market's at. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of speaking of <laughs> trades, even though we've already said Clayton Keller isn't on his way out, but what about this? A, what would a realistic return for Clayton Keller like Clayton Keller look like if he were to go, let's say move back to his hometown of St. Louis? What do the Blues even have? Uh, it, it would have to be a a blue chip prospect. So I, what is it? They have Snuggeru in their system. I would assume Snuggeru has to be attached, or it's no deal. They have to have at least a first. I, I'm thinking two firsts. Oh yeah, no doubt. Uh, but it also depends on what else you're throwing in. Uh, you're gonna have to make the money work. So you also then have to like throw in something else to sweeten the deal to have the money work. So. It would probably be two first Snuggerud, maybe another really good prospect, a bad contract or two, and like a seventh or sixth to eat the bad contract. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, I think yeah, Clayton Keller, you know, would be definitely something to ask a lot for. I don't think, and to be and to be honest, I do not think the St. Louis Blues have the capital to be able to trade for him. I, and again, this is all speculative because he's not getting traded anyways. But, hey, you know what? I think, um, hey, you know, if, if you want to if you want to at least know what you're looking for, let's just put it this way, you can't afford it. Yeah, no, Keller, 86 points last year. He's a consistent guy that plays all games every single season minus one year. That resume is literally perfect when it comes to availability. He's just been getting better and better offensively, both the goals and assists and overall points. Like he's a first line winger. He's a pre like, if if Chikrin was a premium asset, but there there were some knocks on him because there was a couple dings on, on the on the bumper. There aren't those dings on on Keller. It's literally a, a, a Lambo, a brand new Lambo that you want to buy. Absolutely. Um, that's all the questions we have for now. Um, do you have any final thoughts before we close things off? Bring up the Charizard question. It was asked. Bring up the Charizard Fine. question. <laughs> question was asked, is Charizard overrated? No. Charizard is the best Pokemon ever. Um, I, I truly believe that. And uh, I made a D's nuts joke on Twitter. Go ahead and check out that thread. <laughs> I made, I have a, uh, not Charizard, but a, but a, uh, um, within the evolutionary line, a, a, a uh, Charmander sticker playing hockey on, my, on the back of my phone. I had a Charmander doll up there <laughs> just hanging. <laughs> it's playing hockey. <laughs> Did we get another question? Like, like uh, screw it. Let's do the last like ho uh, hockey unrelated question. I saw like one or two more. Yeah. Best hamburger toppings. Go. Cheese, ketchup, done. My response to that one, and I did a quote tweet for that one. This is my favorite. I love Southwest style burgers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I because I go jalapenos or some other kind of grilled chilies with guacamole and sauteed onions. We're, side note, we're never going to have a locked on uh, lunch meeting uh, where we go to a burger joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. Is there anything else? Ah, that you it? never know. Maybe, it might, it might, might, might be worth it. Who knows? <laughs> uh, and then one just kind of to make make things joke at, you know, joke off of it is a uh, question that you just put out there. Why did you bring that idiot ASU sports guy in here? 
I got it. I, I know the exact reason. I've had multiple cover. I, I'm literally an insider on this. I, I can give you guys all the answers. Um, it's because for some reason, all right, people watch him. I don't get it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, like uh, obviously, he he's not a health advocate or anything. Look at this. But also, like, he just goes on rants and 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 yells and and talks directly out of his rear end. And he and he he's like a washed up celebrity or something like dude has a high inflated ego but for some reason people buy it and they eat it up and we want those views and subscribers so bring him on and make sure to, to show his stupid face to the world and now we're locked into a contract so <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been looking to break it for years now Anyways, that's going to be it for today's episode of the Locked on Coyotes podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review. Like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube and, of course, on the SiriusXM radio app. Don't forget to interact with us on social media or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Locked on Coyotes, and on Twitter at LO underscore Coyotes. I'm personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Matthew Jacobson is at the AZ Sports Guy. Interact with us, ask a question that you might have. We might answer right back or in a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.